Hello and welcome once again, uh, Jack here from 10 feet down uh, for another session of Late Night Magic. I was playing through the campaign and I... Oops, <laughs> the score sheet there was 65535. Obviously um, that's the highest 16-bit number you can get. 32-bit? 16-bit number. Bullshit, isn't it? <laughs> Cheating buggers. Alright, so let's go head to the campaign. And I've actually played on, I think we, we were here, on the second Jace encounter. I think last time I um, defeated um, Chandra, which is my own deck, which is Born of Flame deck. And I was back to Jace for a round two. For some reason you played Jace twice and I, I can't understand why. Maybe they, they lacked um, decks in the, when it first came out, I can't remember. It doesn't matter. So let's take Jace on again. He wasn't very impressive first time round, his deck is so slow. Um, he basically tries to make me run out of cards. Let's see if he can do better this time. I think we've seen Jace's emo little intro before. So let's whiz straight through. A three land and four cards. Now with this guy, direct damage cards that do damage to creatures don't have a lot of benefit. So I'm really more after creatures. So flame slash, is that flame slash? It's all but useless. Yeah, and this one's all but useless too. Um, still, it's not a bad hand overall. I'm going to risk another hand though. And... Yeah, <laughs> it's worse. But hey, let's go with this. So basically what Jace does is he, um, he doesn't attack your hand, he attacks your deck. Now there's 60 cards in that deck and if he can make me run out of cards he wins. The other trick he's got is he um, steals my creatures. I think that's what it's called, Dream Puppets. Draw a card, if a graveyard has 20 more cards and it draws 3 cards instead. Hmm, a bit early for that. So basically I'll just draw one card. You would have thought he would have saved that. Alright. Um, what's the cost of this? Perfect, two. So this is a brilliant little card for me now. Um, allowing me to cast my red spells for one mountain less. But I would like another land. So let's hope I draw land next turn. And uh, this guy comes out next turn. And I can start damaging him. So I've got a couple of pumpable creatures there, and that's all I really need to take him down. Because obviously if he steals them, he can't pump them. So he's got the equivalent in blue. His cards are now one island less to cost. Oh, fantastic. That is handy. So now I've got the Furnace Whelp or the dog. It doesn't actually make any difference because um, he can't do anything anyway. So I think I'm going to use... There's actually nothing I can do this to anyway. I can't attack. Um, I've got to assume that the whelp is a slightly more advantageous creature. But I've also got to assume that he's going to try and steal it. So I think I'll stick with the Hmm. <laughs> Tough choice. I'll stick with the dog. No, I won't. Yes, I will. No, I won't. Yes, I will. <laughs> I don't know. Dog. Flying whelp. It's got to be the whelp, isn't it? Come on. It is numerically the most powerful creature. I say numerically. Um, flying. But um, what I'm worried is he's going to steal it and then I could block a creature he's attacking with with a, a grounded creature. So he's probably going to try and steal this flyer. But in reality, if he tries to steal the flyer, what I'm going to do is kill it with Chandra's Outrage anyway, so... 
I'm fretting too much. Um, so this is actually a creature. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player puts the top X cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard, where X is the number of cards in his or her hand. Alright, so basically I'm going to lose four cards. I'm not really worried about that kind of thing. Okay, did I draw? Another one of these. I don't really want to cast that. I'm, I'm glad I put the flyer out now as it happens. I want to do him 5 damage. But I wouldn't mind putting a card out as well. Mind you. Yeah. Yeah, this is better. Chandra's Outrage. I can end that creature and do him 4 damage as well. Perfect. Because Jace has so few. Um, yeah, I see it's still reverse, isn't it? One second. I got the other version. There's two versions. One version is the reverse of this. But this'll do, this'll do. And Jace doesn't have a lot of creatures, so when he does have a creature, it's a good opportunity to use one of these cards. Now fortunately I can't pump this creature up, but I did him two damage. So I think I could have done him five. It could make all the difference. <laughs> I don't think so though. I think that was the right choice. Now with this creature now, like I say, I mean with three mana, I'm just gonna keep pumping it up and attacking it for five. Uh puts the top two cards of Israel Library into his or her graveyard. Yeah, whatever. So that's another two cards down. You can see the size of my deck now is 44. His is 47, so his strategy isn't really taking place. Now he's got a, a charm at now. When you draw a card, you may have a target player put that top card. So basically, when he draws a card, I lose a card from my library. Again, no big deal. He'll need to work a lot faster than that. And another one as well. So I've got 41 cards left in my deck, which is a hell of a lot. Now... That's just a little pumpable creature. That's the Phoenix. I like that card, but actually in this situation it is very useful. Because it's got haste. I'll do one less damage again. Um, but... I think it's worth it. I'll get that damage back next turn, assuming he doesn't steal it. If he does steal it, then I'll just use... Um... Did I cast the wrong card? No, I didn't. Sorry, I mentioned things. Oh no, of course I can pump it as well. So I do exactly the same damage. I'm first all the time with that. So in fact, actually, I'd do exactly the same damage as if I hadn't cast the Phoenix, so it is the perfect move. Five damage out of the way. I forgot about the, um, what's it called? Nuvi Medallion. Another one of those, so now his blue spells are getting very cheap to cast. But his hand's very small. I'm expecting him to steal one of my creatures. Um, it's definitely a broker. <laughs> it's a nice card, isn't it? Target player draws two cards, then discards two cards. Um, strange one. If he uses that on me, I'd be more than delighted. <laughs> if he, you know, it's a weird one, isn't it? Because it gives me an advantage. I like sucking through my deck. As long as I choose the cards I discard, of course, it's, uh, it's a benefit to me, not, or not a detriment. Okay, he's not going to last very much longer now. And also I've got the opportunity to kill that creature off. Have I got the reverse one? No. 
think I'm going to ignore whatever he's going to do and I'm just going to go for an all-out attack. Uh, he can't block me because this is uh, on the ground. I'm just going to pump up this guy as high as I can. And attack him for... is that 8 damage? Ooh, got a hefty knock. So he's dead next turn basically. I don't think there's anything you can do to stop this. Because I'll just um, use the lance next turn or the spear. So, again, an interesting card, but useless. At the beginning of each player's draw step, that player draws two additional cards. I mean, it's a bit of a two-edged sword again, isn't it? Again, I suppose if my deck is running low, it, it does play in his favour, but... Only very marginally. So he's now um, tapping all my creatures. Tap all creatures to open player controls. Those creatures do, don't tap during the next player's own tap step. So basically, that's a really good stalling card. These two creatures will be out of the um, game next turn. They won't be out of the game, they'll be tapped. But what he doesn't know is I don't plan to use them anyway. See, that's why I don't like those kind of cards, playing them. You know, it's because I like getting lots of cards. <laughs> So I, I could hit him with the haste creature again, and you know, I could do many things. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to end this and just finish Prawl Jace off. I'm not very convinced by that deck he's got. I mean, it's a very clever, tricksy deck, but I'll have to play it myself because the computer just doesn't play tricky decks that well. Um, all that card is, I'll check it out later on. But yeah, interesting anyway, so that's the last of the normal planeswalkers. The last guy is Nikolai Bolas, and um, he's just a pure cheat. So whether I beat him or not, we're down to pure luck. But anyway, I'm off to bed, so thanks a lot for watching, and uh, goodbye. Bye bye.